Today, we've got a pretty good gem on our hands, which is a Web3 game that has uh, tremendous interest and backing from investors, gaming community, some KOLs, a lot of people that are interested in this. And it's a Web3 game that you actually want to play. And oh yeah, there is this great little aspect of it that it's a win to earn. And what are you winning? Bitcoin. So the whole thing about Web3 gaming, and uh, this has been true from the beginning, uh, from Axie Infinity to today, which is you have to make a game that isn't just all about Web3. It really has to be, it has to be a game that's actually people want to play, it's fun and engaging, and they will keep doing it again and again. So because of that, I don't care what kind of dynamics that you have, it has to be fun and people actually want to actually do it. And that's what we have right now today with Farcon. And we're gonna see that uh, the game itself looks pretty good. I mean, this is by a AAA rated studio. Uh, this has been in development for a couple of years now, and they're just about to uh, release the token. Now, the game is actually already available. You can play it today, which is what I think is pretty amazing as of November 2023. And you can just see that uh, there's a lot of aspects of this game that look pretty darn good. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at exactly as we break it down as far as I call the cut, which is the community utility team and tokenomics. With the community, we're going to add in the game itself and the dynamics of what is actually going on. So the community, and this again, this is this is a game that's uh, it's just dropped in November. And now we have a pretty reasonably strong community. You got almost 8,000 members on Telegram. Uh, for Discord, you got 33,000. Uh, the YouTube channel, 120,000. You know how long it's going to be? I got 120,000 subscribers for my channel. Well, first of all, this channel, if you're watching, Dan DJ only has like 40,000. Uh, but the other one, uh, Digital Asset News, has 360,000, somewhere around there. It took me a couple of years. So for them to get this that fast, that's pretty darn good. And then also, uh, I think that the best and most important place you can get your, your information, Twitter or X as it's called now, 185,000 followers in a, in a short amount of time. So this is the game from the game deck. We're going to go through the Web 2, the Web 3 properties, the season, the impasse, the win to earn aspect, and everything in between. So let's start with the game itself. The gameplay, it's around a dynamic 4x4 team in various arenas. Now, a lot of games are out there like that. You can, see, you can say like Fortnite and some of the big ones. Yes, I understand, but there's, a, there's some key differences we'll get into in a little bit. Monetization strategy integrates both Web 2 and Web 3 economies. And then the tech specs, the platform, unfortunately for me, I only have a Mac. I don't have a PC, but that's where uh, most of the uh, the big hardcore gamers go, PC. And it's launching on consoles. Now, I have to stress this. They are working to get this on consoles, but it is not out right now. So if they can do this, they can pull this off onto a PlayStation or an Xbox, that would be huge because it would be the first Web3 game on a console itself with an actual wallet and the aspects of Web3, not just the game that says it's Web3, but actually do things with cryptocurrency and digital assets. The monetization model is free to play, and this is important. Uh, there's been different games out there where you have to buy an expensive NFT to play, which kind of is a barrier to entry. However, on the flip side of that, it does lend itself to massive uh, appreciation of value when you do stuff like that. But I personally think it turns off a lot of gamers when they're saying, hey, you want to play this game? Spend on this NFT for $200. And that is a recipe for disaster. And that's what the that's the direction they did not go. So it is free to play. But there are aspects of how the token, the NFTs or NFTs will do pretty well. As far as the references and the design itself, it's a League of Legends and strategic depth of gameplay. That League of Legends, remember that word, it's going to come into uh, favor pretty soon as I explain some people that are behind this project, hint, hint. USP, interplay between gunplay and abilities. Again, this is all for uh, the gamers themselves. Now, you may not be a gamer. You may not. You may just be an investor. That's fine. It's pretty much my, uh, my MO as well. But you have to understand the reason why we go over these things is so people can understand the actual game and that people are actually going to play it and move forward. So interplay abilities, depth of Farcana is enriched by various com combos of weapons, weapon modes, and hero abilities running a diverse range of gameplay. We'll get into why that is important later. Hybrid monetization for a sustainable model. Blend of proven monetization strategies from top tier AAA titles, seasons, tournaments, cosmic shop. Web3 approaches like tokens, NFTs, and crafting. Essentially, they're going to take the best parts of Web2 and the best parts of Web3 and merge them together. So it's pretty good. Target audience, first-person shooter, third-person shooter, PC shooters players, obviously, because it's one of those games. Ability shooter players, the people that play Valorant and Overwatch. Competitive PC players. And I will, I would like to have you key on this one, three words, 
highly sensitive audience. There is no more sensitive audience than the hardcore gamers that are out there. They absolutely despise NFTs. They despise cryptocurrency as it comes in. It is inevitable. And then we're going to go over why that is and uh, the different arguments that they may have, which doesn't really make sense. And you can decide for yourself, but it is a highly sensitive audience for the gamer community. They are uh, prospective ambassadors and content creators. So some people say, well, who cares about them? You should care about them. So they're, they're your core audience and they're going to be your evangelicals when things actually go right. And I think this is one of the games that actually do it. And then, of course, the Web3 gamers, that's us. They are often more interested in the game's economy than its gameplay. Okay, guilty as charged. Gunplay overview. And I didn't know this was a thing because they're talking about the upgrades and how it's going to be a better game. Ease of weapon handling, dual fire modes. All right, great. I'm not a gamer, but accuracy in third person. We've resolved typical third person camera accuracy issues using analytic algorithms, making it feel as precise as first person shooting. So, of course, third person shooting, it's like you're behind somebody's shoulder watching people play. First person shooter, it's like you're actually their eyes and you're actually shooting. So I guess there was an issue with that and uh, they fixed it apparently. I will let you make the uh, decision if you're a hardcore gamer or a casual gamer as you can download the game and play it for yourself and figure it all out and say, yeah, this does work. The system, and this is where it gets interesting about the game itself. Roles are specifically designed to create synergies when players are optimally positioned to one another. And there's a frontliner tactician healer disruptor. This makes no sense until you watch this video. So check this out. Our game has a built-in tournament system that consists of leagues and championships where every hero is a star of a cosmic show. Each star possesses abilities that define their role in the team. Choose a frontline hero if you enjoy diving into the thick of the action and dealing massive damage to the enemy team. High mobility and offensive abilities enable you to initiate combat and retreat when necessary. Do you like to play by your own rules? Choose a tactician. Their actions determine the success and composition of their team's attacks. When everyone rushes forward, someone must cover the rear. By taking on the role of the healer, you can save teammates, empower them, and allow them to retreat. No one likes problems except for them, for they are the very source of them. Select a disruptor to thwart the enemy's plans and wreak havoc on the battlefield. The key to success is to use your abilities in a way that complements the rest of the team. So right, interesting concept. And I'm sure there's other games out there that may have something uh, similar to that. But this is, again, one of the games that kind of brings it all together. Web 2, Web 3, Web 2.5 looks quite interesting. So that's the roles itself. Now let's talk about the monetization system. So it's free to play. All gameplay features are equally available to all players without restrictions. Again, free to play. You don't have to buy anything. You can play it. But Rob, how do they make money? How does that work out if it's free to play? There's an example, and I'll get to that in a second. Monetization offers more meaningful rewards and personalized content. Expedites the discovery of in-game content. So the, it's, they're taking the whole point of traditional approaches. They have short-term seasons lasting two or three months, array of collectibles, assets, weapon skins, periodic in-game events to sustain player interest. Again, how does this work if it's free to play? This doesn't make any sense, right? Well, it made a lot of sense for Fortnite. Fortnite is the biggest game uh, for years now. And it's the first game to make a billion dollars in the first five months. And that's all the way back in 2018. So again, with inflation, who knows what that could be? Three billion, I don't know. But it, but here's how it works out. Anything that, that's free to play, people want to upgrade. And they don't upgrade to make themselves better in the game. That's not how Fortnite works. That's not how Fortnite is going to work. They're going to upgrade their skins to make them look a little bit different. They're going to upgrade their weapons that look cool. They're going to upgrade their different vehicles and parachutes and everything else. But it doesn't mean that they get advantage in the game. It just is like a part of the game that which they want to upgrade to make it look better, feel better, uh, enhance the experience. So again, with Fortnite and uh, free to play with Farcana, I can see this being a really good way to do things. And that got me thinking about why do we have to have a token in Web3? Why can't we just use cash? It only makes sense, right? Well, here's my question to all the gamers out there. Why do you have to have V-Bucks to play Fortnite? Or why do you have to have in-game currency of Robux for Roblox? And I asked this exact question because when I get this, this pushback from Web2 gamers like, ah, oh, bro, you're just trying to rip me off because you're making me buy this token and so on and so forth. And I'm like, why don't they just use cash in there? Why do they make you buy these tokens that you can't do anything with, that you can't take off, that you have to buy in bulk? 
So I said, one more question for gamers. What's the point of playing Fortnite and buying V-Bucks? I understand they use them to buy skins and modes, passing, gifting, but why do I have to turn my fiat into V-Bucks when it's the same thing? Which it is. So Zero Beat says, hey, here's the thing. The point of playing Fortnite and buying V-Bucks is to enhance your gaming experience. That's fine. You use V-Bucks to buy skins, passes, et cetera, which makes your gameplay more personalized. The conversion of fiat into V-Bucks is just to use a dedicated gaming currency. What's the difference between that and crypto? I don't get it. Now imagine replacing V-Bucks with a crypto. This could take things a step further. Not only do you get to personalize your gameplay, but the crypto you earn or use and appreciates at some point, hopefully, could also have value outside of Fortnite. You could potentially use it in other games or convert it into fiat, or you could, yeah, convert it into fiat and then do something else. So that's just one aspect of it. Uh, Wintermute says, to, to rip kids off, you need a skin for $200 in-game currency, you need to buy a minimum of 1,000. Also easier to spend, obscure amount, don't see how much actually money. And the source he says is, hey, I'm an ex-game developer, so I know what I'm talking about. Alicio says it's all about loot boxes. Paying with fiat would make it gambling. Again, loot box, if you're not familiar with those, as you play, there's a box in there. And of course, if you want to use the in-game currency, you can roll the dice and maybe you get something that's valuable or maybe it's something that's not. But again, that could be uh, valuable as well. And if you're using fiat, that's gambling. But V-Bucks, that's a little bit of a, lo a little loophole. Space Bull says in trad gaming, it's not for good reasons. Legal loophole is confusion. Don't want to know your dollars you're spending. You can't leave. You can't cash out your V-Bucks or your Robux or anything else. But in this situation with Farcana, you can. And John Price says, ever notice that when you buy hot dog buns, there's eight in a package. You buy hot dogs, there's 10 in a package, <laughs> which makes a lot of sense. But it's not all negative. There are some reasons behind it. Michael says, well, you can earn V-Bucks by playing and having the battle pass. No problems there. There's got to be something against being fiat. Boss says that way Fortnite is not responsible for figuring out and collecting taxes on each transaction. If you're not paying with fiat, paying the sales tax initially on the transaction is all that is needed, which I can push back and say, well, for every transaction, you can still pay taxes. $100, 15% on tax for a tax of $100 is still 15 bucks. It's still 15% as opposed to a dollar times 15, <laughs> the same thing. But again, I can see where it's like, well, it's also taxes and and cost per transaction, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to make the point here. And then Teeth says it perfectly. In my opinion, rather than the NFT model, this is the future of gaming. If V-Bucks were a publicly traded crypto, it'd be bigger than Axie ever was. We'd all have moon bags and never touch the game. And that, I think, is the whole point of it. That's the whole point of using Web3 and moving forward because you can take it and you have your decision. It's not just about some Web2 guy going, hey, you're trying to screw me over by, by using this in-game currency. You already do it, just now you can take it off. And Jacob says, hey, you don't game, don't worry about gaming, stay in what you know. All right, good enough. So to move forward, let's talk about Web3. This is where we're gonna add tangible value to the acquired assets. There's an NFT collection and crafting. Of course, NFTs we already know, nifties. Crafting, Players have the opportunity to craft and enhance their personal spaces as well as create visually in-game items. And there's a little note here, all in-game transactions utilize our FAR token, which also grants access to rare NFTs. There is a caveat there, you can use fiat in there if you so desire, and we'll talk about it in a second. The in-game economy, it's free to play, and it encourages sustainable in-game purchases. Players can convert in-game time into real-world in earnings. NFT economy allows value creation, of course. Now, that whole word that I said, crafting and NFTs, let's go over that. Crafting, users receive a specific in-game currency called particles. That is, again, you could call that V-Bucks or Robux or whatever you want to call it, but it's an in-game currency called particles. It only stays within the game. You can't take it off. That's like the Web 2 part. And that is for each spe specified activity in the game, playing in a match, accomplishing tasks, and participating in events. Particles allow the players to create various personalization items elements and assets. So what would that be? That would be like to upgrade your skins, upgrade your weapons, upgrade, the, I guess, your pets or stuff like that. And again, it, it enhances the gaming experience. I'm not saying that's like the greatest thing that I want to do. I'm just saying that's what this is for the game. Craft acceleration. Now, here's the thing. And this is where things go to Web3. You can grind it out. You can be a grinder and you can play for 60 days and you can get a, a whole new character skin. You can get a new weapon skin in 35. You can get a pet in 90 days. You can get a unique product in a year, but you got to play all that time. Or if you're so inclined and you don't have to because you get all this stuff for free, you can stake your token, the token, which is far. And the player is staking, the number of particles progressively increases. That's the whole point of the utility of the actual token. You can boost your batteries you can get more skins and all those stuff. 
And that's why I feel that Web3 gaming is far superior to Web2 because of those options. NFT types, again, all different things that you get. Skins, weapon skins, character charms, key rings, voice casts, da 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 And of course, they're different price points across, across the board. Common, a legendary, this is roughly about how much it's gonna cost. Of course, I think that that will fluctuate as they're gonna have their own marketplace. So they're gonna be able to swap and sell your NFTs and things like that. And there is one more thing I would like to say, like as a parent and a grandparent, I will just tell you this, these games that we buy and we buy the skins and we buy the upgrades and stuff like that, once you leave the game, that's it. You're not gonna get any of that stuff back. Wouldn't it be interesting is if as you play the game and as you move forward, you're like, you know what? This isn't for me anymore. There's a new game out there or I just moved on with my life or I found something that is like to do better or again, another type of game. Wouldn't it be great if you could sell everything within the game to just having stuck there? That's the whole point. I'm not talking about cr crossing it over, but for me again, as a parent and I can say, hey, you're not playing that? Sell all that stuff so we can get it and we can roll into the next game. Might be actually a good way to do things. This is where it gets interesting the tournament system, and this is where you're in Bitcoin, as I can understand it via this slide deck. So how does this work? What is the Bitcoin-driven reward system in Farcana? Everything we just talked about and so on and so forth. Answer, Farcana incorporates a Bitcoin-driven reward system that includes cash boxes and tournament prizes. Remember what we talked about as far as like the esports aspect in the very beginning? Well, here you go. Players have the opportunity to earn Bitcoin by participating in the game's competitive events and tournaments. This adds an extra layer of competitiveness and rewards skilled players. If you can tell me that the hardest asset on the planet, you're gonna be able to own that by playing a game and being very good. We saw what happened with Bitcoin miners and how they dumped a ton of capital into that to be the first to do those things and to be the dominant leader. What do you think is going to happen when esports come out and go, you know what, you can win cash or we can pay you in Bitcoin. You actually earn that any way that you see fit. Don't let me know what you think is going to actually happen. So how does this work? There's a league and there's a tournament. A league is time-limited com uh, competitive player rating system. Players' ratings are influenced by the number of quality of match played. Number of leagues grow in direct proportion number of players. So here's how much it is. Again, free to play. You don't have to pay for this. The entry fee is zero. League duration is three months. The prize pool, $12,000 for everybody. Number of prizes, 400. So again, you're breaking that up. But if you wanna go to the next mile, the next step, a pro league is one with a paid entry fee. This is ideal for players who have placed high in past season tournaments. It's almost like a proving ground, right? You go into league, see how well you do. Oh, you're pretty good once you upgrade a little bit, once you come into the pro league. You have the pro league, it's 20 bucks a month. What are you gonna pay in that in Farcana? And far. The league prize pool, 35%. That's everybody. And this thing blows up. That's a lot. Percent of tournament pass sales revenue, number of prizes is only 4% of participants, and that will get super competitive. Here's the tournament system. Championships. And again, the league is a little bit longer duration. Tournament system is just short. It could be one to three days or something like that. Championships are held regularly. The buy-in is a buck to $20. And of course, that pool could grow quite substantially. Championship prize pool, 40%. This emphasizes team building through in-game mechanics as well as while interacting with players and external communication. Where do they get this idea? There's a guy. His name's Ocelot. And we'll talk about that in a second. Here's the token, FAR. Fully compliant with Arbitrum blockchain standards. Now, I do believe this is going to be multi-chain. It could be Arbitrum. Looks like they're also using Polygon, but again, it's layer two solution. It's not ERC-20 solely, it's a layer two. Maximum supply of 500 million FAR tokens. That's not too many. And then there are several ways to use the tokens we just talked about. You can purchase FAR tokens. They can buy a pass, in-game credits, the skins, the staking, T passing. But again, you don't need to do it. It's free to play. But it does enhance the experience. Direct use of the FAR token in the game, a way to motivate the players, sure. Now, I'm going to leave this up for a second. It looks a little confusing. Let me tell you it is. But I want to direct your attention to the bottom where it says exchange and buyer player. And you go from there. And when it says exchange, it says buyer wishes to use the exchange. Yes or no? They don't want to use the exchange? Great. You can still buy FAR for fiat money. So you can buy the token within the game in some way with their on and off ramps. So apparently that's going to be an availability, which is pretty interesting. Then buyer player, buyer's motivated for direct purchase. Buy, you can buy credits for fiat money, and that will be like the in-game currency and stuff like that. 
And I also like to uh, direct your attention to in the upper right hand corner cash box to see Bitcoin is there. That, of course, are the rewards. And also, they're going to be burning NFTs and a whole host of things. So you can pause that right there and take a look at it. But that is how the flow or the value flow of the token itself. And of course, lastly, staking, which I believe is one of the big reasons that you, you get the token. And this is why the Web2 people will be like, oh, you can do that. Staking in Fargana involves locking up tokens for a set period. You get discounts, 1% to 30%. So again, you can use fiat or you can use the token itself and you can lock it up and you get discounts. Exclusive skins, content available. Uh, for a staking period of one to six months, they'll be uh, on a continuum. Faster accumulation of game resources. Again, we just talked about. Access to special events, reduce transactions fees for NFT sales and purchases. Again, another reason why you'd want to use the token itself. So that's all great. Now let's get to the not so great. Here's the token allocation. 16% in seed. That's a, that's a roughly decent amount. 20% as far as strategic. That would probably be what they want to do for marketing, get the message out there and so on and so forth. 15% of the team, which would yeah, be the people that actually created it moving forward, the advisors and so on and so forth. 3% actually is advisors, but 2% is going to the public right now. That is going to be later on. What we're talking about right here is an IDO. And there, we're going to have that through Tencent, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. 3% goes advisor again, and 44% is 44 a treasury, which they can do whatever else it is. So not the greatest of tokenomics, I must admit, but hey, not if things perfect. Now, if you go to the website itself, if you're like, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. I don't know if I want to do that. Why don't you just go for this, which is the airdrop? You're going to go to the website, Farcana, links in the description, start the mission. You're going to go through all these processes. Now, I will just say like this. I'm an American citizen. I live in Puerto Rico. And unfortunately, after I go through the Farcana account, which was pretty easy, uh, I can't set up a Bybit account. And when I do stuff like that, uh, it'll say, sorry, you're not in our IP address and you're blocked and so on and so forth. So you can't move on as far as like getting more of these credits for like following them, social activity, playing the game, refer to friends. You just can't move past that, which is a bummer. I wish they would have changed that. But hey. I got an account right now, and when you have the account, you can actually download the game and start uh, playing it and move on from there. And you can earn things within the game, and you can actually win to earn. It's amazing to me because as time moves on, I see that the, the people that actually put out a product are less and less. And these guys have already done it. This is their roadmap, and they actually hit their goal, November 23, game beta, eight characters, tournament system, they have that. December, game beta 0 3 already also out. February 24th, early access game. I think they're above that. They've already done it. Big update on May. And then May 25 is they're going to roll, or February 2025, the release to everybody. But right now you can play it and it's actually available. Again, AAA game, uh, which means that uh, they have uh, 130 plus, yeah, 130 plus uh, members working on it. It uh, just means that they've got a lot of a lot of uh, manpower going into it. That's all AAA game means. People can say it's a rating. It's really not. It's just a term that was thrown around the 90s and early 2000s. So let's get to who are these people, the team itself. Well, I'm not going to talk about everybody because this video is going kind of long, but Ilman Shazov, Alex Minkin, and Carlos Rodriguez. Who are these guys? Well, actually, I'm going to talk about them and then Xenia Rub Rubinova. So Ilman is the founder and CEO at Farcana. I find this guy quite interesting what he is. Here's what he, here's what he is. About built numerous health tech, game tech, and industrial AI solutions, many of which have been integrated by business and governments. United Nations experts under the UNODC program helping to solve social problems in developing countries by integrating AI tech. That's a narrative I believe is going to be pretty big coming up in the next bull run. Author of 46 scientific articles, owns 10 registered invention patents. 2022, the governments of UAE, United Arab Emirates, granted Ilman a golden visa for entrepreneurship in the exceptional talents category. And here's been his history, of course, Farcana full-time, co-founder of Acostri, health tech company uh, with the purpose of early recognition of respiratory diseases, One Boost, full-service global Bitcoin mining enterprise. So he has his uh, roots in uh, crypto and digital assets and uh, some other different things that he's done as well. So that would be the CEO and founder. Alexander Minkin, he is the lead game designer, and it looks like he's, of course, full-time right now. I'm not going to pretend to think that I can pronounce that Russian word, so I'll just go past that. Lead game designer, Yandex, lead game designer, a pocket-sized game. So great, he can make some games. Then also, uh, Zinia Rubinova, 
Uh, looks like she's a lead game des designer and developer or narrative designer for Farcana. Did the same thing with Banzai Games. And again, another Russian name. I'm not going to try it. Lead game designer of the Noon Projects and so on. So, of course, yes, you can. But there was this guy that you may have heard, Carlos Rodriguez or Ocelot. Who is this guy? Well, he's the founder and largest shareholder and former CEO of G2 Esports, an active advisor for Farcana. This is where they got the ideas of the tournaments and the leagues and where I think it's going to be pretty big because of this guy, but not without a little bit of history. In 2022, after establishing numerous partnerships with major international companies such as BMW, MasterCard, Pringles, Domino's, and Adidas, giving a, person, a perceived valuation of over $350 million for G2 Esports, he resigned from his active CEO role to pursue personal ventures. Now, some people will say, well, he resigned. Some people say he may have been pushed a little bit. There was an interview that he did with uh, Cobra Tate or Andrew Tate, and people didn't like it, but it really doesn't matter. He is outspoken, and I got to tell you, that's what some places need, some products need for people to get things moving. Look, if you can do that, I'm all aboard. He was drawn to the Web3 game not only because of the game itself, but because of our founder, Elman Shazov. And he says this, I think Farcana is lending itself well to the gaming and AI scene as it becomes more known and respected among players experienced in shooter games. Right now, the games attract a lot of attention, but our goal is to reach the masses on all platforms. Who is this guy? How does he know about all the shooter games? Well, I can tell you right now. It's because he's part, and he was the founder, or part founder, of G2 Esports. And Esports is a mystery to me. People seem to love it globally. I haven't gotten into it, but again, uh, he, before he made this, he was also a professional esports player. And when he said, when he made G2 esports, eight teams, 100 plus first places, 5 million rewards, 40 million fans worldwide. Is that really true? Uh, probably, but I will say this on their just their Twitter account alone, they got 1.5 million followers. I had to follow up and ask people about G2 esports. Apparently, super loved by everybody. Now, you can comment in the comment section below and tell me how wrong I am. But apparently they've done a lot of winnings and uh, they've got a huge, massive following. And someone directed me to this video, which is really interesting. And I'll link this in the description. The league's most hated player built its greatest dynasty. And that's who we're talking about, the Ocelot documentary. Check that out. It's about an hour long. The reason why I think people hate him is because he was a kind of, uh, he didn't do too much as far as the practicing, but he was successful in his early days. Maybe he hung around too long to play, but he created G2. And that's who's working with Farcana. And that's why I believe it's one of the many reasons why this is going to be a massive hit as we turn the Web 2 to 2.5 to Web 3. All right. To finish up, all the things that we just talked about are fantastic. It's great, right? But it does nothing unless you have hype and push and drive and investments. And people have to get behind it. You know that guy right there is? Yatsu. Had him on the channel. Great guy. Great vision. He's the chairman and co-founder of Animoca Brands. Animoca Brands is working with some of the top different Web3 games to really push things forward. I will link the in the description the interview that I did about Yatsu and his history. It is quite extensive. And he, not only is he an angel investor, but Animoca Brands also invested in this project as well. Anish Agarwal, Elders Council, Samdori, vice president of Animoca Brands. So not only do they, did the again, Animoca Brands invested, these guys individually invested. And then uh, Shang Gupta, Elders Council, NDGG. Mohammed, head of tokenomics at Animoca Brands. I actually met him in uh, Korea. Nice guy. And then Ocelot Rodriguez. So when I took a look at this, I'm like, well, that's great, but how big is it? How much push do we have behind this actual brand? And this was their, their tweet that they put out. This is where I find all my information, quite honestly. And you can see that again, investors, Animoca, Fenbushi, Polygon Ventures, Merit Capital, uh, MM Trust. These are some of the big hitters out there. And what got me was I'm like, okay, Animoca Brands, again, it's all push and hype and how much it can actually do. Animoca Brands has got a pretty good amount of followers, 227,000. Polygon Ventures, eh, not that much. But if we take a look down here and we go to like the people that are pushing it, you're going to hear about this game everywhere. This guy, Crypto Dog, just a small uh, 761,000 followers. Crypto Calio, 614,000 followers. Pentoshi. 737. And the people that they have behind it, I'm not saying that it's going to be the, the end all be all. But when I take a look at the people that are pushing this project, I do not see how it cannot be successful. Again, 
every investment has risk. This is not financial advice, but I can just tell you that I am personally invested into it. So maybe I'm a little biased, but I'll be talking about this on this channel and my other channel and also on Twitter with my half a million subscribers. All right. So how do we get this, Rob? That's what you're asking. Well, you can't get on a centralized exchange. You can't get on a decentralized, ex even a decentralized exchange. It's an IDO. And that's going from my friends over at Tencent. Here's how it works. There's actually is a video that I did, uh, two of them. First of all, uh, the first video I did on Tencent, which was just three weeks ago. And I kind of lay out how the launch pad works, why it's a near risk-free crypto launch pad and how everything kind of comes together. I didn't do a good enough job. So I did another video uh, just, uh, just a couple, about a day ago, where I said how to get access to the Tencent launch pad. Why is that important? It's because this, the Forgana token, is going to be on their launch pad, and you have to sign up with Tencent. Now, today is January 7th. It is in the morning. It is 8 o'clock a.m. here, Atlantic Standard Time, which is Puerto Rico time, which would be 7 a.m. Eastern time. And UTC time would be roughly about uh, 1 o'clock p.m. So right now, on 8 p.m. UTC January 7th, that's the deadline for subscribing to TGLP or buying a TGLP NFT snapshot will be taken. What does that mean? Watch the video I just talked about. So that's going to be in roughly eight hours. So if you're watching this, good luck. But don't worry. This is just round one. Round one of the IDO begins. It opens for 24 hours. A guarantee allocation for all TGLP users. Then, and that of course is Monday. Then on Tuesday, on January 9th, round two begins, first come, first serve. That's why I made this thumbnail and the title as you need to get to do this now because I ran a little bit late, different things that I was doing, but I personally have invested. I'm actually in this round with you as far as like the IDO. So you might wanna start to move a little bit quick on this one. Up to you, not financial advice. So lastly, Let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the pros, it's a great game. It looks good. People want to play it. It's got some great backing. Graphics and it's dynamic. Of course, AAA rated studio doing it. It's embracing Web 2 and Web 3 players, uh, which is, I think, a huge mistake to only embrace Web 3 because the Web 2 are like, what about us? This doesn't make any sense. Why are you charging us $200 for an NFT to play a stupid game, which actually sucks? This one doesn't. Large community, enormous buzz. And investors, of course, and uh, key opinion leaders that we just talked about. It's not a play to earn, like some of the games that are out there, that were out there, but it's a win to earn. So I think this, the competition, is what drives people in there. And of course, the token is, it worked pretty well for Fortnite. Again, one of the games that made a billion dollars in less than five months in 2018. I think it'll work pretty well here. It's got a working game. And a lot of different projects can't even say that, even though they've been in development for years and years and years. Also, the token, 500 million only. It's got an airdrop, which is going on right now. It's built on L2, uh, Arbitrum. Also, I believe on Polygon. I believe it is going to be multi-chain. Here's the problems. There's a lot of competition. If this was 2021, it came out, it would be a brain-dead easy choice. But right now, there is competition out there. Now, we talked about the things that will make it all settled apart. But remember, it's not just like there's no competition. There's some pretty good games coming out. But I think this one's going to do well. Inflation, as far as the tokenomics, if you have staking and you earn the rewards, is there inflation there? I'm not for sure, but it looks like when they stake the tokens itself, it looks like it only goes into discounts that they can use or the different skins that they can use and NFTs. So it doesn't look like there is inflation, but I'm not going to rule it out. And I couldn't find anything about inflation. So just be aware that that is an unknown. Tokenomics, 2% public. That's kind of crazy. And that means that there's very few. So just be aware that uh, when there's that few for the public, it gets risky. Now, if change, things change, I'll let you know on my Twitter account or my X account, but this is what I've seen in the tokenomics. And the last one is, can they deliver on the console deal? Look, if they can deliver on Xbox and PlayStation and actually get a, a wallet integrated in that, I mean, especially with regulatory issues here in the United States, it's game changer and it's game over. But that's what we have for today. So look, if you like today's video, Give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about here, especially on Dan DGen, moves so fast. So I'd highly recommend that you uh, subscribe so you can get the notifications. All the things we talked about, links in the description, and now it's up to you. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.